And now for a closer look at the new Politburo, we're joined by Professor Bao Gang He, who is Chair in International Relations and Deakin University Fellow at the Academy of Social Sciences in Australia. Now, Prof, Chinese leader Xi Jinping has secured his historic third term, and that's really cemented his standing as the nation's most influential leader since founder Mao Zedong. What does this mean for China going forward, both politically and economically? So uh, this, uh, what this means, the first is uh, the fair way to the youth league uh, faction. So today we see there's uh, no the former youth league uh, members are in the top position. And uh, the, uh, Xi Jinping consolidated his power and uh, he can do what he wants. And he has a very strong team with him. And then, then he can achieve his ambitions. That, that, that is will be maybe in the next five years we will see more geopolitical uh, tensions, say over the Taiwan issue on the South China Sea issues. Mm. And let's take a closer look now, Prof, at uh, the new Politburo Standing Committee. What are some of the most significant appointments in your view, and what exactly is Mr. C trying to signal with these leadership picks? Yeah, so this this is a very uh, surprising. The Li Chang was uh, promoted as a number two person. So probably historically, like the the when the, the after Tiananmen's uh, events, Li Peng wanted to be a party secretary, but to his great surprise, then the Deng Xiaoping pick up the Jiang Zemin from Shanghai. So today we see the kind of Chinese politics always unexpected. Rather, so the Li Chang was selected number two. One of the things I think the, from today's uh, makeup of uh, top seven peoples is, uh, is a relatively good sign in the sense that the uh, Western commentator um, start worry that this uh, start beginning with a new era of the Xi Jinping's autocracy. And he is likely to abandon not only he abandoned the two term um, rules, but his popular also will abandon the age limits. But clearly, those seven, except she, these age limits has been followed. So that's a good sign. So we got this young, a group of young uh, next generation leader. And uh, it is not clear who will be next uh, successor, but uh, the, they have a, a pool of the a pool of potential candidates there. So, so it's, a, it's, a, it's something that succession plan is in order. So that, to some extent, is good news. Mm. It's relative is good news. Um, um, yes. And speaking of that succession plan, uh, Professor, Li Tiang, you mentioned earlier, was a surprise pick, and it's also the party chief of Shanghai. Now, many are saying he's expected to become the yeah. next premier after Li Keqiang steps down uh, next March. What do you think we can expect from him as Mr. Xi's right hand if he does uh, become premier? And how will that compare with his predecessor? Yeah, I, I think uh, it, it's more likely he probably will become the prime And uh, the, the key issues was that uh, um, Xi Jinping will have uh, the fourth term. Now, this is a critical issue. If he has a fourth term, then the, to what extent Li Chang will be a potential candidate for his successor. Currently, we don't know yet. And uh, this is the challenge. I think Li Chang is probably is more likely next five years is a test for him, whether he's qualified for the job. In the past, like under Mao Zedong, Mao he picked up Wang Hongwen, but then Wang, Wang Hongwen didn't do his job properly. Mao was not happy. Then later on, he picked pick up Hua Guofeng. So the next five years will be really the test for Li, Li Chang. Mm. Now, Prof, we also want to... Uh, ask your opinion uh, on the scenes yesterday when former President Hu Jintao was unexpectedly ushered out of the closing ceremony for the Party Congress. Now, Xinhua News Agency has said that it was for health reasons, but could there be more than meets the eye, especially when it happened just when the media uh, was entering the room? I, I, I think it's, a, it's a partly health reason, partly for political reason. It's a really probably a symbolism. It's a symbolism of the Hu Jintao's era, 
of the Youth League faction formally end today, uh, end yesterday. And today really shows how the Xi's people is fully in control. So what we see is probably uh, we will see uh, witness a new politics of faction will take, take the shaping between the different provision leader. And also plus uh, another new faction is emerging. There's uh, they call the military industrial faction. The Western call the airspace uh, crickets or air airspace uh, faction. That is, uh, she has to pick up about more than 10 people who originally work for the airspace uh, industry, not become the various the national leader. So this faction might be uh, become very stronger. So probably we will say that in the next five or 10 years, a new faction politics going on. So today is a 21st party Congress. It's a, it's a greatest uh, historical mark event. That is a fair way to uh, Jiang Zemin's faction, fair way to the Hu Jintao's factions. Mm -hmm. Well, apart from party factionalism as a potential challenge in the future, what are some of the more immediate challenges facing Xi Jinping and how is he likely to address them now with this new stronger mandate? I, I think that one of the challenging issues is the Taiwan issue, whether he um, will still uh, uh, kept this uh, strategic uh, restraints and at the same time demonstrate Chinese military power. So this is a this is a is a great it's a potential the challenge. The other challenge I think is that the one of the challenge is that how to he manage the society, uh, societal uh, relationship. Now to 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 the this uh, twenty party congress, uh, it's it's a we 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 have a witness the the, the people are silent. Except the people, some uh, forward official message, the majority of people are silent in the WeChat in the all the public forums. Now this is uh, it's very, very unusual. Like such a big event, such a big issue that matter for all the Chinese people, but the Chinese citizens does not can they do not say anything. Now this uh, how to manage this relationship is critical for party for the future. Mm -hmm. Professor, thank you so much for your insights. We really appreciate them. We were speaking with Professor Bao Gang He, who is a chair in international relations and Deakin University fellow at the Academy of Social Sciences in Australia.